Okay, g'day all. Welcome to the most difficult mathematics quiz in the world. Welcome to What's a Creel's Mathematics Competition. Um, this competition, or this quiz, is uh, in celebration of this channel reaching 7,000 subscribers. So I hope everybody enjoys, and I'm very proud to announce the very first What's a Creel Mathematics Competition. I'm not sure how you've managed to uh, to reach this video, but if you've if you've kind of found this video looking for you know the hardest maths quiz in the world. Um, well, you might be <laughs> you might be surprised at just how difficult this is. Um, this is not just a little trick question quiz. You know, it's it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Alrighty, a boring but necessary disclaimer. So I want you to read the disclaimer and the instructions and all of that sort of stuff in the video description um, because that specifies exactly the rules, uh, I guess, of the um, competition. And I want to just make a special point that uh, I have the re the right to decide on a single final winner and I'm not really in the mood for humoring any sort of tomfoolery. <laughs> yeah, just play fair, play by the rules. Um, you can do pretty much anything you want that's uh, that's legal, you know. Don't steal my computer or anything like that. Uh, but anything else is fine. If there's problems found in my own computation, then I might have to cancel the competition altogether. Yeah, I don't want to do that, but you know, you never know. If the competition's not fair and it's found out later, then uh, I might have to cancel it. But we'll see what happens. I hope not. Alrighty, the rules for the quiz. So the quiz contains nine questions and a cipher. Uh, so tw ten questions, pretty much. But um, the cipher at the end is really the you know the main crux of it. It wraps everything together. The answers to each question, that's each of the nine questions, uh, must be written in decimal. And they're all 10 digits long. So if you've got an answer that's fewer than 10 digits for one of the questions, then I want you to pad it with zeros. Yeah, instead of 104, 104, I want you to put, you know, enough zeros so that there's exactly 10 digits for your answer. Uh, likewise, instead of 0.53, well, you'd want to put eight zeros, 0.53. Now, I hope that makes a bit of sense. Uh, and if your answer has more than 10 digits, so it's something like an irrational root or something like that, then you want to uh, chop it off. At 10 digits, uh, I don't want you to round. Yeah, that's super, super important. So you will have to get exactly the same digits as me in order to correctly decipher the uh, hidden message. Yeah, I want you to truncate instead of rounding. So this number just here, normally in uh, in maths, you'd want to reduce error and you might round it up to um, 3, 7 here on the end. Yeah, uh, but for this particular quiz, I just want you to chop it off. So 3, 6, don't round. Alrighty, unless otherwise specified in the question, um, all of the questions are supposed to be read in decimal, and wherever I've used the word root with no further specifications, I mean the principal square root. Yeah, so if a question is asking you to take the root of 9, uh, I'm looking for 3. Yeah, the principal square root, not negative 3. Um, the ordinary rules for the order of operations stands. Um, I have put notes uh, in some of the questions down the bottom, and I might also add notes in annotations later on if I find out that there's something ambiguous about the questions, but I hope it all makes a bit of sense anyway. Um, I've used only integers and real numbers in the questions and answers, so none of the answers involve any imaginary numbers or higher dimensions. You know, there's no quaternions or anything like that. Uh, but if you want, um, depending on what method you're using to compute these answers, you know, what algorithm you happen to be sticking with, um, you know, you might use imaginary numbers in your computation. Yeah. Uh, but the integers and real numbers are the answers, and they're the only numbers I've used in the questions, too. I hope that makes sense, too. Um, I've tried to order the questions in increasing difficulty, but yeah, that's, that's pretty arbitrary, really. It's, um, it's pretty straightforward algebra. Uh, for the first question, but by the end, I think you really need um, computer programming. Yeah, I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> You'd have to be pretty, pretty switched on to get the last one. Anyway, um, yeah, this is a competition for a short while, so this will be up for seven days as a competition, and after that, I think I might just leave the quiz up uh, for fun. But the first person to decipher the code presented in question ten and in the video description and leave the deciphered text as a public comment. That should be a public comment just there. It's got to be public on YouTube, uh, on this video as well, uh, is the winner. Yeah. So your objective is to decipher my code and leave as a public comment on this video the deciphered message. The winner is going to receive 100 of my best Australian dollars. And they'll also be the first human ever to beat the What's a Creole Mathematics Challenge. I think that would, yeah, that that's going to be amazing. 
All right, riddle number one. Here we go. I've also um, phrased everything in smarmy little rhymes. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm not equal to zero, one, or two. I'm not negative at all. That just wouldn't do. But that's not all, and listen with care, for double my root is half of my square. What number am I? And just a little reminder here, we only want the first ten digits. Don't round, truncate. That's riddle number one. Riddle number two. My square is a cube. I'm a palindrome too. More than a single digit, but no more than a few. But there's just one more thing to know about me. I am the lowest such number in base 63. What is the answer? In decimal too. I want you to give me the answer in decimal, even though the number is referencing, or the question, sorry, is referencing base 63. A uh, little note down here, you're looking for an integer greater than zero. That's riddle number two. Riddle number three. Ooh, things get a bit sticky. Uh, how many ones has a Google? Well, there's just one if it's written in decimal, but scribbling it hastily with two as our base delay, how many ones has a Google? <laughs> Things have taken a turn for slightly more difficult. Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> Riddle number four. I am pi. The base is e. The log of x to the power of me is four times the root of the square of three. Then what, my friends, is x? <laughs> This is getting a bit nasty. Uh, the base is a reference to the natural log and perform the power after you've taken the ln of x. Little hint down the bottom there in the notes. Little hint down the bottom there. Okay, that's riddle number four. Riddle number five. Ooh. Uh, I, um, I'm more than two but less than three. When raised to a power and that power is me, you may be surprised but you'll always find that the number is exactly the number nine. That the answer is exactly the number nine, sorry. Yeah, so just remember that you want the first ten digits there, if that happens to be um, a number with more than ten digits. <laughs> Another little hint. That's riddle number five. Riddle number six. Oh, oh, things have gotten ugly. At one I saw one, then one, then two. Fourth I saw three, it's very true. Fifth was five, then eight, then thirteen. Oh, the numbers that I have seen. It took a good while, and I followed for miles. But what did I see at a billion? <laughs> Creel. Nasty. Can you work out the lowest ten digits of the billionth element of this well-known sequence? Maybe. Riddle number seven. Four to the nine starts with 144. But here's something else, an extra little chore. What's nine to the nine to the 144? Just the first ten digits, please, and nothing more. That's quite hard. Um, I'm looking for the lowest ten digits there. Yeah, the least significant ten digits, if you will. Yeah, give it a shot. Riddle number seven. That's uh, particularly nasty as well. Uh, riddle number eight. Uh, this is, uh, well, it's nasty too. <laughs> three to the x is x to the three. It seems so simple, I'm sure you'll agree, but there's a catch, my friend. Listen closely to me. X is less. It's less than three. <laughs> what? Riddle number eight. And riddle number nine, I think the nastiness level just goes through the roof, but here we go. 42 has a root and it's rather long. It's an infinite expansion, but don't get me wrong. With irrational roots, it's always true. There's a digit at position one million and two. I am that digit and the nine digits more if positions one and two are the six and the four. <laughs> oh, good luck, good luck. Okay, um, well riddle number 10 is the cipher. Uh, here's the instructions. I want you to remove all of the radix points from your nine answers to those questions, uh, those previous riddles, and I want you to write out your answers one after another with no spaces. So the answer to the first riddle on the left, and the answer to the ninth riddle on the right. What you should have is a 90-digit decimal integer, beginning with 2 on the left and ending with 8. A little bit of a hint there uh, for questions uh, 1 and 9. Uh, remember to pad your answers with zeros if they had less than 10 digits. Alright, the next step, I want you to raise your 90-digit integer to the 16th power. That's um, 
yeah, whatever the number is, say x, I want you to go x to the power of 16 and you should end up with uh, another number. I want you to perform XOR with the result from this uh, power operation um, with the number marked cipher in the video description. I'm also going to provide the cipher number on the slide, which we're just about to see, but you don't want to really read the slide, you want to get the number from the video description. Yeah, particularly because if you're typing it out from um, you know, the slide, this video, you might actually uh, make a mistake. And uh, I don't think that the message is decipherable even if uh, one digit is wrong. Anyway, after performing the XOR, convert your result to base 256 and the digits of your number in base 256 happen to, rather happily, uh, correspond to standard ASCII characters. So I want you to convert your number to ASCII characters and uh, fingers crossed you should be able to read a deciphered message. <laughs> fingers crossed. Cross your toes too, just in case. Um, if you've correctly deciphered the code, then your message is not going to contain any peculiar ASCII characters. Yeah, that's just a bit of a hint there. So if you've got things like little faces and upside down question marks and things like that, then you've not deciphered the message properly. The, um, the message that you're looking for is plain English with a few letters, a few digits and some basic punctuation. Okay, this is the cipher number just here. Yeah, so this will be in the video description as well. Yeah, use the one in the video description and just use copy and paste from whatever explorer you're using uh, to watch this video. And basically all you want to do is raise your nine answers to the power of 16, XOR the resulting number with this one, and convert to base 256, printing out the uh, digits as ASCII. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy, but good luck. Good luck, everybody. Um, the cipher number's in the video description, as I said, and copy it. Don't try and type it out. Uh, if you think you've got the answers to the nine questions, but the message isn't coming out for you, then you might want to think about privately messaging me, either on YouTube or my email. And some of the questions are really, really difficult to compute, so if I've made a mistake in my own computation, then I might have to update the cipher number, which is really why you want to use the number in the video description and not necessarily the one presented on the previous slide. Uh, and basically, good luck all. Thanks for helping this channel reach 7,000 subscribers, and I hope you have fun with this quiz. Cheers. See ya.